8.55 a.m. We just arrived at the Ogden Police Station where we're gonna go in and meet with detectives. We're also meeting with Heavy D as well. Yeah, last known contact that I know of was November 17th of 2021. So he'd been missing for several months before he was actually officially reported missing. And we also know he's 48 years of age when he went missing. And he was driving a 1977 burnt orange, bright orange Chevy Impala that's missing as well. Uh, license plate is L524F. We're kind of at a, a dead end with the case. So you know in the area and like having a better grip of the case now, like where, where would you start? I think we start at uh, Pine View right there. And then if we have to work our way up. To work up to Kazi, yeah. Kazi would be interesting because I don't know if anybody scanned Kazi. It was really suspicious to them that another one of their family members had been found up there deceased. The vehicle was found on land, but they were found in Kazi. I think we should shoot right up to Pine View. 10.43 a.m. We are pulling into the marina at Pine View. 1.47 p.m. We know we only have two vehicles in this lake. I've made it to the vehicle. I repeat, I'm on a vehicle. 4.41 p.m. They've come to the conclusion that they want both of these vehicles out. Five thirty-five. First vehicle, which is the Chevy Silverado, is fully rigged. On this pull, you should see this Chevy. So the sheriff right now is, is checking the contents of the vehicle. Oh. 5.51 p.m. So far today in our search for Shane Strong, we've uncovered two vehicles here in this lake. The first one behind me, a truck. We've already pulled it out. It's getting ready to go up this cliff. This is still a very extremely challenging recovery, not to mention we still have another vehicle over 40 feet deep. Stay tuned because you'll see how we're going to get the other vehicle out. Turn me inwards like this. <laughs> yeah, but you don't get hit by it, I guess. watching this, if you enjoy what it is we're doing, cleaning up marine environments and bringing closure to cold cases, please hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed.
good. Who knows? Most, most likely it was stolen. It's no longer in the system, but the, the most important part is that, you know, everybody came together. All the different agencies were here to assist us in helping us get these out to clean up the marine environment. It's been there a long time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's been there a long time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's been there a long time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's Well, at least we know it's not here. This is not a location where he's at, you know? And it's a good thing. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, with what I've been able to investigate and look at, uh, you know, there's still a good chance he's out there, you know? So everywhere we look and we don't find him, that's a good thing. It's just, he's somewhere, hopefully, living a different life, at least, you know? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if he's here and he's underwater, I want to find him. But if not, you know, this is a good thing because we're not finding him. And in the grand scheme of things, it hasn't been that long. You know, the less than a year, that's, it's not normal, but there's still a lot of hope there. Tomorrow was cozy, right? Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to go down to, we, we got to get some approvals for that. So we'll see um, that or 21st Street Pond. Um, everybody keeps telling me that it's too shallow. Um, it's not that feasible, but I just, just it's right there in town. You know, if, if, yeah. if, if this is a foul play scenario, that's a good location to dump a car and nobody suspect it. I know they do a lot of wakeboarding and stuff there, but if you don't know it's down there, you don't know it's down there. Yeah, I did talk to somebody about going further, but you have to have approval. Yeah, in, in, in the dam area. With, with the way it's, it's laid out over there, I mean, it's, it's, it's possible, but I would say unlikely, you know, especially with the way these pullouts are. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if this is a self-harm scenario or an accident, I mean, it's, it's really going to be more probable up here, but I mean, it, I mean, we don't know until it's checked. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the, the federal government has to authorize that. All right. Well, it's I very, just wanted to talk to you. Very nice meeting you. I talked to you on the phone. Yeah. So, yeah, it was nice to meet you too. Thank you for all the work you've done on this case. Like, yeah. You know, I know you're keeping it out there and keeping people aware and running the Facebook page for him and like that's it, it, it takes a lot to do that and you know, somebody's got to do it. Shane was a person who just loved people. Yeah. And I loved him. Yeah. So anything that I could do to help him. Yeah, yeah. Or his family, or his kids, or anything at all. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. And yeah. Gonna yeah. Don't give up. Keep fighting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will talk to you later. I give you a hug. Oh. Thank you so You're welcome. So much. You're very welcome. Keep fighting. Don't give up. So we zip lined all the rigging down onto the vehicle. So now all I have to do is dive down. It's all gonna be sitting down there waiting for me. Pull it up, it's already connected to the truck. So it's really, it's all downhill from here. The most challenging aspect of this, this was gonna be a little bit more of a challenge because it's upside down. We're gonna drag it like a sled, but it's gonna to wanna to fill up with rocks and gravel and rocks. And... It's gonna be a good time. Yeah. Comp check, comp check. Diver down, diver down. Twenty-one feet, twenty-one. 
21 feet. Thirty feet. I'm at thirty feet. All right, I'm at the front of the vehicle. I'm beginning to rig it right now. I got the vehicle rig. Both wheels are fully rigged. I'm making my way up top side. Seven fourteen PM. Second vehicle is completely rigged. On its way out right now, this Chrysler should be breaking the surface here shortly. There's a boat anchor on it. Boat anchor on it? Yeah.
10.59 p.m. We've been at it all day. We've been able to rule out this body of water, but it's only one. There's still more to go in this area. We still have Causey left to check, as well as the 21st Street Pond. We were able to move, remove two vehicles a day. That's a huge win for the marine environment. So this is a positive, and it's a process of elimination. One step closer to possibly find a shade. If you guys haven't already, like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, hit that subscribe button. And if you have the means, check out the premium membership. You can get access to content early. It's a great way to support us. Thank you so much to the community for supporting us, all of our viewers. Thank you so much. Tomorrow, we're gonna be back with Heavy D and the crew. A lot more still yet to come. Stay tuned. We are right now at the 21st Street Pond. It's 8.57 a.m. However, this pond is privately owned. There's a lot of signage here, a really, really strict uh, verbiage as far as not getting in here. So I've reached out to the ski company who leases this pond. I'm waiting to hear back from their CFO. It's possible. I mean, middle of the night, somebody could have pushed something in here. Yeah, or, or up a, along the other side. I know we have this little hill over here on the side of the parking lot, but man, if, if you're really trying, I mean, you can do it. It just depends on like how deep is that right there. I just got off the phone with the CFO here and he said, whatever we need to do, knock it out. So that's what we're gonna do. We're theorizing that he disappeared in November. So there's a high pop, probability that this could possibly have been frozen if he would have disappeared in November or December that they don't really know you know what I mean that's the thing so we, we're thinking it's the winter time yep. so it's a possibility we're definitely gonna have to check the middle of this for sure Absolutely. a lot of growth in here four feet definitely not deep enough. We are down to six feet now over here. Definitely deep enough to conceal a vehicle. More growth, more growth, more growth. Well, that about clears this. There's just nothing in here. It's too shallow six feet at its deepest. Every search is a successful search because you can rule it out. We know and we now know where that vehicle is not. Warner Mark, lake level's real shallow. Yeah. About four feet yeah. in most areas and then it gets down to six in some areas but we scan the whole thing and okay. there's nothing in there. So where are you guys going next? Willard. Are you gonna, are you gonna go up to Kazi or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come here and take a look. So that's a case from 2012. Uh, it's a missing persons case. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see when you get up there, Kazi's pretty unique. Um, if somebody ends up disappearing in Kazi, we typically don't get a fact. Because of depth of, or yeah, fact, terrain? Depth. It's okay. 180 feet to the bottom. The temperature's at the bottom of the reservoir. It's really cold. cold. And so, yeah. They, that, that, matter of fact, when you cross the dam, you'll see signs that say that you require, every person on that lake is required to wear a life jacket. And that's because if they, they drown or disappear in cause, we, we really have no way to get them back. Wow. So in 2012, we had a case, a uh, guy went missing out of Ogden. His car was found up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we we searched for a couple days. Uh, mm -hmm. We searched the surrounding area with helicopter, with uh, search and rescue, uh, with cadaver dogs and all types of stuff. I mean, was it was it one cadaver dog? Was it multiple cadaver it was, dogs? We had several dogs in. Okay, at, at different times, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, they would brought we brought them in. In stages. Yeah, okay. we brought them okay. in and hey, bring your dog in now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that okay. dog lead. And this is a popular cliff jumping area right here. Yeah. There's a trail that comes across the top to get out to the cliffs, but this area right here, a couple of dogs indicated. Um, at the time, we had just got side scan sonar. Mm -hmm. Any type, it's a tow fish, mm -hmm. and so. Every time we dropped it in there, we just snagged on stuff. Okay. Because um, yeah. if you look up the mountain, that's how it looks under the water. But like I said, a couple of dogs did indicate here. 
So if you could maybe just make a couple sweeps by yeah. there. Yeah, if I, if, I, if I see anything um, out of the ordinary, I'll let yeah. you know. And I, if I see anything out of the ordinary, I mean, I'll, just, I'll just mark it and dive it as long as it's a good depth and I'll let you know. And yeah. obviously if I do discover anything, I'm not gonna disturb it until we notify you and then. And you you record that. Oh yeah, 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 yep. Cool, let's get right to it. Okay. Ow, f Shocked the heck out of me. Oh no. Yeah. The machine did? Yeah, heck yeah. We try it again. Ow. <laughs> ah. What? Yeah. You feel it? No. No? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know. It was like a full on electrical really? surge. Yes. It was shocking my arm too on the truck at the same time. See the bottom all over there, all out there. So far where we're at, the boat ramps are uh, extremely shallow. As soon as we pull in, there's warnings, abrupt warnings put up at the entrance, talking about dangerous conditions because it's so shallow. We're trying to fly the drone over where West 650 gets closer to the water. Um, but from here, it looks like it's shallow as well. Plus there's a wall. So anytime we're not Sure, not certain. Sometimes the drone can help rule out bodies of water. The dike road here on the north side, the water is back so far that you can't get a car into it. Another drone shot rules it out. On to Causey. Causey's gonna be uh, next level stuff with the terrain. Plus we also have the a possible secret case with the sheriff you know, that we're, we're looking at. It's gonna be really difficult to detect anything, but if we do, we'll dive on it and see what it is. 1.12 p.m. and we're on to Causey. Two twenty-eight p.m. Um, Heavy D was just here in his helicopter. He said that there's several areas where the guardrail has been broken and or some areas as well that look like they've been replaced. So to him, he's, he's like, he, he really thinks that this is a great location for a uh, potential accident. Yeah. really eager to scan this. Uh, this isn't as steep as what we were working with yesterday, uh, but we wanna be real careful walking over these rocks. This is gonna be kind of slick going down. Also, I'd like you guys to wear life jackets out here too, because if you guys fall in 150 plus feet deep, we're not getting you back. All right, let's get to it. All right, set it down. All right, gentlemen, good luck. If you need anything, let me know. Over. 10-4, copy that. Reading about 10 feet in my direction. I'm curious to see what you'll find along the cliff edge there that's just below the canyon road. Over. 68 feet deep. There's nothing over here. I'm gonna uh, 
changed my casting to 100 feet. Let's do 110, give us more coverage area. Hey guys, my name is Peter Coughlin. Uh, you may have not have seen me before in uh, previous episodes. Uh, maybe you have. Anyways, I just wanted to introduce myself real quick. Uh, my name's Peter Coughlin. I'm from Central Oregon, from Redmond. Jared has tasked me uh, as being the new uh, CEO of Adventures with Purpose. Uh, I'm tasked with overseeing the organization uh, to make sure, considering the fact that we now have two teams, to make sure that we are utilizing all of our resources and time in the most efficient manner possible. I come from a background in uh, technology and business. Uh, if, if you have been a longtime fan of the program, as like, like myself, uh, you may have noticed uh, one of Jared's first sponsors was uh, from a company called Evo Gimbals. Uh, we manufactured camera stabilizers at the time, and uh, I was actually one of I was actually one of the owners of that company and uh, was one of the first sponsors of the show. I truly believe in the mission uh, that Jared has put forth, uh, bring, bringing closure to families and, and solving uh, some of these cases, some of these families lost loved ones. is uh, it's, it's just a real remarkable movement and I'm, I'm very humbled and grateful to be a part of it. I'm very glad to be out here in the field, being able to experience everything out here on the road with the crew is uh, a completely different experience than uh, watching these YouTube episodes that we come out with. Uh, there are some incredibly long hours that are put into each one of these searches. Incredible hard work goes into each and every episode that's produced on this channel. Very proud to be a part of this to see where we can take this next. I'm only reading 63 feet deep right here where I am at at the moment. 10-4, copy that, Doug. Thanks for the update. Right ahead of me. There's a section of guardrail that's visible. Road runs right along the top of this uh, canyon side. I see that, Doug. I'm kind of curious if there's a section that's broken as Heavy D described earlier today from the Black Hawk helicopter. Um, I mean, the road's right here, like right here. I mean, anything's possible. This is great location to scan. Um, You gotta get out here and do it. If, it. if a body of water is deep enough to conceal a vehicle, it's always a possible location. You know, but one thing we're, we're, we're dealing with in this case is an extreme lack of information. We are working with somebody who was reported missing months, suspected months after they truly went missing, which, which insanely hinders any investigation. Um, and then overall, just a lack of information. Uh, we don't have a concrete uh, last known location. All we know is that, you know, a few months went by, you know, they realized, hey, he's missing. He hasn't contacted us, let's report him missing. Um, he hasn't contacted his mom, his son, or his daughter. And I mean, that, that's, that's alarming. And it, it's been almost a year. I mean, he's been known to disappear for weeks and sometimes a month at a time, but never this long and never without communication. Uh, so this is completely uncharacteristic of him. Uh, the only you know, real uh, X factor here that doesn't make sense and you know, it, it's been investigated is that there was a letter given to mom saying that he was gonna uh, seek some drug addiction help and he was gonna go to rehab and so forth. But you know, everything's been checked and it's been over a year. Um, it's, n n nothing makes sense. And this is one of those cases that, um, you know, we, we know he's missing, we know he's missing with a vehicle and we're gonna do our best based on the information we have. You know, um, you know if we're unsuccessful here on this, uh, on this reservoir, unfortunately, you know, we're gonna have to um, move on to the next case until we get that piece of information that can bring us into a better search area. Or simply by producing this and being a voice for Shane, we might be able to figure out where he is or somebody might know where he is or, or there's so many possibilities that can happen simply by producing this and being a voice for somebody we deem doesn't have a voice anymore. Being a voice for the voiceless. So that, you know, we have to be okay with that at this moment. We've exhausted 
after this, you know, we really have exhausted um, our resource for the moment until we get that extra piece of information. We still have a lot of reservoir to check. And I mean, that just pretty much sums up like where we're at right now with the case. And if you guys like really enjoy what it is we do here at Adventures With Purpose, please, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification. And if you have the means to do so, become a premium member. You have the ability to see some episodes early, a few days early, then we release them to the public. And if you have the ability to do so, pick up a t-shirt, pick up a hat, whatever it is, it helps support us. It helps keep us out here on the roads, helping family and law enforcement completely free of charge. And thank you guys for simply watching this. It is because of you we are able to do this. Truly, we thank you. You have no idea. It's an honor to be out here and be out here because of your support. So thank you. Out in the middle, it, was, it only got down to about 30 feet and we're making our way back now at a, uh, at a different line coming out a little bit further from the shore to get a different scan. Over. Love these radios, man. It's really, we're up here in some really extreme terrain. Uh, cell service doesn't work, but, th but these Garmin Rhino 755Ts are absolutely priceless you know big shout out to Garmin uh, for making sure that we have the equipment that we need you know our sonar systems our communication systems and so forth big shout out to Garmin man anybody who needs uh, any type of GPS technology sonar technology Garmin is definitely the way to go they're cutting edge they're leading the industry in almost everything that they touch we 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 swear by them we use them a lot of our a lot of the stuff that we've acquired through them because of them has made everything we do here a lot more efficient, a lot more accurate, and, and that's what it's all about. So we're really excited to be able to utilize their equipment and just simply improving our communication, not to mention our sonar capabilities. Um, there's a lot of power in that. And it's really nice to have uh, you know, such an awesome company support us in everything that we're doing. So 30 feet deep, great imaging. Um, authorities said that, that it, they think it gets down to 180 feet deep. Let's see if we can't see where it's 180 feet deep at least. Plus we know we have to um, locate the area in which the sergeant, I mean, I'm um, sorry, the Lieutenant uh, Horton was referring to the uh, drowning victim. It's going to be really hard um, after that amount of time to find a drowning victim but I'm not gonna say it's impossible, and I'm definitely gonna try. We'll get some really good scans over there and see if we see any type of irregularities, and if I do, we're diving. 82 feet deep where we are right now. I repeat, 82 feet deep. You know, if this reservoir freezes over, you know, he disappeared in the winter. I mean, so there's a very small possibility that uh, a vehicle could have come out here and fell through the ice. Those cliffs behind you, it's probably where it's gonna be deepest over there. Getting some really good, 109 feet. So there's no roads over here, so we're not missing anything. Uh, we're gonna go back over here where the other road is, as well as uh, the point that the sheriff was referring to. 28 feet on down imaging. Any update? So far, not yet. We've been able to rule out the two of the far fingers. We're coming back down uh, the one south of where you are. That'll be our last spot, which is directly where the uh, sheriff wanted us to check where the cadaver dogs hit. And and, and I, I'm not seeing anything unusual. And I mean, the depths that I'm at right now, 30 feet, 28 feet, 25 feet. Um, you know, if a body goes in here, it's gonna float. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know all of the details on that story, 
I don't know if it was just a reported sighting or if just the vehicle was found up here. I'm pretty sure from what we were told that the vehicle was found here. So they um, think that he drowned in the reservoir, which is a good assessment to make when uh, somebody goes missing in such a rural location and their vehicle is found here and there's a big body of water. Uh, that's a fair assessment to make. Uh, it's also really tough terrain out here. If you get to hiking and you fall in one of these holes or um, hollers, you're, it's a good possibility you'll never be found. And you know, even away from this area right here, I'm like really confident. Like, if somebody went in here, like they're they're going to float. Just because cadaver dogs hit. Yeah, and so you know, yes, just because cadaver dogs hit here does not mean that there's something here. Now, there, cadaver dogs are known to give false signals around water. Uh, I've witnessed it several times, uh, you know, and I've witnessed it where dogs were brought in, different dog teams were brought in at stages, uh, which is where you bring a dog in, you get an alert, you take the dog out of the area, you call in another dog team, they bring a dog in, let them go loose, and they hit on the same area. Um, there's a lot of probability that there was just, there's just something died in that area. Um, water has a lot of decay and death in it. You know, wildlife and, uh, you, know, you know, the marine life. Uh, so there, there's a lot of um, different scenarios that could cause a cadaver dog to hit on water. Getting down to the end here. This is where they usually launch from. This is where the sheriff was saying we didn't want to, we didn't want to come down here because it was really muddy. Sure enough, you can see it is really muddy. You you try to come down here all the way up to seven feet. Now there's a vehicle sitting up there. So you can see in relevance to this in the road. Big shout out to uh, everybody who's come out on this case to assist us and and be there to uh, support our efforts. It's huge collaborative effort, man. Ogden Police Department, Weber County Sheriff's Department, Lieutenant Horton, uh, Detective Nate over there at Ogden PD, uh, the, who's lead on this case. DNR, you know, there, there at the end, we had, you know, quite a few agencies huddled up making decisions on whether or not those vehicles need to come out. And they made the right decision to get those vehicles out of that water source. Uh, it's critical, it is critical. You know, you get a lot of, um, you get a lot of representatives that don't want to mess with these vehicles coming out. Oh, they know they're better off leaving them there. And absolutely not. These vehicles need to come out, especially when I'm there. I have the ability to do it, recover and rig these vehicles free of charge for any agency or community. It's critical. And, and, they, and they recognize that. And they used us as a resource. Big, big shout out to the Heavy D and uh, Diesel Dave and their whole crew, man, those guys are an amazing group of guys. They're, anytime we're in the Utah area, in their neck of the woods, man, they have our back. And, you know, I tell you what, there's, there, it, nothing says more about an individual when they, have, when they have some success and they have fame and, you know, they're financially successful and they're still humble and they're still good guys. And that entire group of guys, 100% sweethearts, you know, it just goes to show, you know, money and fame make you more of who you are. And 100%, man, those guys are absolute, genuine, caring, the most humble group of guys that you can, you can, uh, you can run across. And, uh, you know, thank you, Heavy. Thank you, Diesel. Thank you, Hans, your entire crew. Awesome to work with. Looking forward to doing that again. And uh, we couldn't find anything today to have them back out. Um, but, you know, on to the next. We are hitting the road. We're not stopping. And we're heading to Denver. Heading to Denver, we have several cases there. I'm really eager to get over there, uh, get to working hard on those cases, and you know that, that this is what we do. This is what we do. We don't stop. Day after day after day, state after state, city after city, we're coming to your town and we're going to help with the cold cases that we know about. And it's critical that if you're watching this and you know about a cold case, or if you have a family member or a friend that's missing, or if you're a detective or any other agency that's watching this, please reach out to us. Let us know if you have somebody that's missing and missing with a vehicle. And we can even assist in drowning cases that are recent. We just need a really good target area of where to be. So don't hesitate to get a hold of us. You could reach me at Doug at AdventuresWithPurpose.com. You can also reach us support at AdventuresWithPurpose.com. Don't hesitate to reach out. And if you have any information in regards to other old Older cases, 
uh, that we've already searched or a, any tips or ideas or, hey, Doug, you're doing this wrong or, hey, Doug, you're doing this right, whatever it is, do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, I love criticism. I love all the support that comes in. It's really, really heartwarming, all the amazing respect and love that comes in. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Like I said earlier, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Thank you guys. And uh, on to the next one from here. We're gonna go back here to the ramp. We're gonna huddle up with Peter and uh, see, uh, let them know what we found, you know, which is basically nothing here. I'm gonna have to call the sheriff, inform him of the area that I was able to um, scan for him. I got some good recordings for him and his department to go over. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna huddle up, put our heads together and here shortly, we're gonna be on the road to Denver. Five ten p.m. This concludes day two in our search for 48-year-old Shane Strong, who vanished from Ogden, Utah. We've done a lot so far. Uh, Nate Small here, Detective Nate Small here with Ogden PD. He's lead on the case. He's been with us every step of the way. If there are people out there that might know something that they think might be fruitful or helpful to us, we would love to hear it. And, and where, where can they contact you guys? So they can reach out to us, ogdencity.com is probably the best mm -hmm. place. Um, that's where all of our contact information is. As you guys know, uh, we wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for you. So please, if you're still watching this and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Shout out to Mike King with Profiling Evil, who was able to get us in touch with Ogden PD and uh, it's Detective Tyler over there as well. Um, you know, it's a big collaborative effort and it just goes to show like, there's no egos involved here. And we're all in this for the same purpose. We just want to find Shane. Big shout out to you guys. Yeah, Thank big you. shout out to you and your team. Um, you know, it's not necessarily the outcome we wanted, but it's the outcome we got. Yeah. And so, yeah. You know, I think it is helpful to at least know that he's not in these areas. But you guys have been awesome, awesome asset to us. You guys worked your butts off. We're hitting the road. We're gonna be down to Denver. We have a nine hour drive ahead of us. On to the next case, and we're keeping moving. So stay tuned for the next one.